Uh, Rudy Giuliani, it turns out, is one of the guys responsible for our opioid crisis. Seriously, Tom? You're gonna come up with a bogus way of blaming a Republican for a crisis that doesn't actually exist? Ah, fine, let's see what you got. Seriously, hundreds of thousands of deaths. Three, I, I think it's 300,000 people who have died as a result of this opiate crisis. That's only if you include overdoses from illegal opioids like heroin and fentanyl. But watch this state cult sociopath try and blame it all on prescriptions. And guess who Purdue Pharma, back in the day, right after 9-11, when Rudy Giuliani was a hotshot lawyer, you know, rolling along, this is after he left as, as mayor of New York, Purdue Pharma hired him. Great piece about this by Chris McGreal in The Guardian. He reached a deal to avoid a ban on Purdue doing business with the federal government. Now, the Medicare and Medicaid and the Veterans Administration, huge markets. And Purdue Pharma, we want to sell these narcotics. I mean, come on, we got to do this. They note the former New York mayor also secured an agreement that greatly restricted further prosecution of the pharmaceutical company and kept its senior executives out of prison. Wow, this guy takes longer to set up his crazy conspiracy garbage than Alex Jones. At least Jones can get to a point. Hartman just doesn't have the brain power to be a proper conspiracy crank. He knows Purdue turned OxyContin into a multi-billion dollar drug after its launch in 1996 with an unprecedented campaign marketing the painkiller to doctors. The demand for OxyContin quickly surged. And over 98% of people who took it and other opioids such as hydrocodone never become addicted. According to a study from Harvard published in the British Medical Journal, opioid abuse was observed in just 0.6% of patients who were prescribed opioids following an operation. The, the investigators waded through several million of Purdue's internal memos, and they found that the drug representatives were selling the drugs using false claims. Like? When Purdue discovered it was under investigation, they hired Giuliani. Giuliani uh, was also working his Washington contacts. The Purdue lawyers complained to the office of the deputy, the then Deputy Attorney General James Comey that the prosecutor, a guy by the name of Brownlee, was exceeding his legal authority in wanting documents from Purdue. And so <laughs> Comey sits down with the prosecutor, Brownlee, and says, why are you prosecuting the chicken guy? Right? Comey got his information from, from Rudy Giuliani. Well, it turns out Purdue Pharma's got nothing to do with Sonny Purdue and the chickens. It's a whole different company. And Brownlee had to explain to Comey that he'd been scammed by Rudy Giuliani. Now we're all being scammed by Rudy Giuliani. Well, that was devoid of data and references. So how does any of this mean that Giuliani is to blame for the opioid crisis? What were these supposed false claims? Hartman didn't even say. Here's a fact. This bogus war on pain patients goes back at least to 1997, the very next year from Hartman's whatever. I don't really know what he was saying happened there. But I've linked to a Reason Magazine story from that year about the difficulty a pain sufferer had in getting the medicine he needed to manage pain. In desperation, he went to Dr. Jack Kevorkian seeking suicide. Fortunately, Kevorkian was able to get the guy to see a pain specialist who agreed to treat him in his home. All was going well until the pharmacist told him that the doctor wasn't allowed to prescribe pain medicine anymore. The pharmacist told him to find another doctor, and he truthfully replied, There is no other doctor. This is the reason for this so-called opioid crisis. It's completely manufactured. Pain sufferers deprived of their medication seek out suicide or illicit options on the black market just because they can't live with the constant pain they feel every single moment of every single day and know that they will for the rest of their lives. All this does is take away the only source of relief for these people. And unfeeling, supercilious sociopaths like Hartman keep fueling it, mentioning the opioid overdoses when basically none of them happen just because people are prescribed opioids. It happens because they have addiction issues involving use of multiple drugs and psychological problems that fuel them. I'll say it again, and I don't care how many of you insult me in the comments for it. Addiction is a symptom, not a disease. And by the way, there is a negative correlation between this rise in opioid-related deaths and opioid prescriptions. According to data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and IQVIA, overdose deaths from opioids only started accelerating once opioid prescriptions started falling due to crackdown on prescriptions from the Obama administration. The crackdown did not help the problem of opioid-related deaths. 
It just made them worse, as prohibition always does. We also see this when we look at data across states. According to data from the CDC and the U.S. Agency for Healthcare Research Quality, there is basically no correlation between opioid prescriptions and opioid deaths. And when you look at the actual rates of mortality in the six worst states, you actually find an inverse correlation. The biggest increases happen in states with the lowest prescription rate. The biggest one being D.C., with a prescription rate of 32.5, but an overdose rate of 41. Close behind is Massachusetts, with a prescription rate of 47.1, but an overdose rate of 35. And that was after a serious crackdown. There were 28% fewer prescriptions in Massachusetts than there had been 10 years previously. By the way, this overdose rate of 41 per 100,000, the worst in the country if applied to all opioid patients nationwide, would only be about 20,000 deaths per year, far below the 300,000 Hartman claimed. By the way, the real number of deaths from prescription drug overdose is about 7,000, over 40 times lower than what Hartman claimed, and that's without excluding people who were also doing illicit drugs or had serious psychological illnesses. Over four times as many people die from the flu. If Hartman had his way, millions of Americans would be sentenced to a lifetime of unbearable pain. He does not get to call libertarians, conservatives, or anyone else heartless and uncompassionate after this. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit like and subscribe? And to make sure I can produce more, support this channel on Patreon and Maker Support. And check out all the other great content here, like this video selected especially for you. Oh,